Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to dive into one of the most sought after topics in tech industry, system design interviews. Whether you are gearing up for your dream job at one of tech giants or you are just curious about how to successfully attend system design interview, this video is for you. System design interviews can be intimidating, especially when you don't know how to approach them or you haven't done them before. Trust me, I've been there. How to begin such system design interview? What to focus on? When to pass from one step to the other? All these things you will learn today. In the past, I participated in tons of interviews as interviewer and interviewee. Based on this experience, I created something that I call five step method, which is going into the acronym of under. It helped me to pass all the system design interviews that I participated in, and I hope it can help you as well. So whether you are an experienced developer or a fresh graduate, I'm sure this video is a perfect fit for you. No more blah blah, let's dive into the topic. It's good to know that most of the applications that are around us are built on similar components. There is front-end, which is based on some web application, mobile application, maybe desktop app as well, or some hardware devices. Then when we're moving away from front-end, we have the back-end. And in the back-end, you can usually meet API, database, storage if you are storing some files, there is load balancer that is balancing the requests that are coming into your API, and there is API gateway. Additionally, you might have content delivery network, cache like Redis, some message broker like RabbitMQ, maybe you have data streaming like Kafka, and so on. So these are the things which are key points for most of the systems that are around us. As you can see, there is nothing to worry about. System design interview will take you less than designing the entire system. So you need to narrow the scope of it and you reuse the blocks that I mentioned. It would be great if you know everything what you can about each of the blocks, because this will help you to answer all the questions that will be coming. We will come to it in the next few minutes. Okay, now you are aware of some introduction to system design interview, but what about my method? What do I use to pass every single system design interview? It's based on five steps. First step is to understand the business domain. Second step is to narrow it down. Third is to discover numbers. Fourth is to evaluate the basic components in the infrastructure and your software architecture. And five is to redesign what you prepared in step four. Let's begin with step number one, understanding business domain. During system design interview, most likely you will be asked to design system like Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, X, or maybe some banking system. Most often the applications which are selected for system design interview are the ones that you should be aware of. So like banking system or social media that is very popular. There is a high chance that you know how they work, what elements do they have and so on. But if you face during this system design interview an application that you are not aware of, then please ask interviewer to just describe what functionality does it have, what features does it cover and so on. So here you need to understand what you are going to build. But if you know the system, start describing it. So let's say I asked you about design of the application that is similar to YouTube. Now you should tell me what you know about that. What you can tell is that, okay, we have some upload functionality of videos, probably, yeah? You wait for confirmation, then you receive the confirmation from the interviewer. There will be for sure download, so the video can be downloaded by many different people. You can share the link to the video, you can comment, rate the video and so on. 
tell really everything that you know about this business domain. When you are ready with the description and you confirmed all these things with your interviewer, you have to go to step number two, narrowing the scope of the system design interview. How do you narrow it? Assuming you talked about applications similar to YouTube and you mentioned that there are commenting functionality, rating, downloading files, uploading videos and so on, then you just grab the most critical part like upload and download and you ask the interviewer if we can narrow the scope because systems like YouTube are so large that it is impossible to focus on every single functionality during system design interview. So you would like to get just the scope of uploading and downloading files. If interviewer says that it's fine, you continue with step number three, which is about discovering numbers. Discovering and talking about numbers is one of my favorite parts of system design interview. Here you can have a discussion with your interviewer, you can ask if there is total number of users that we expect. If you hear that, yes, there is, let's say, 1 million users, then you write it down. If you don't hear it, then you say, okay, can I assume that we will have 1 million users or 100 million users or so? Then based on this number of users that we got, you might ask the next question, which is, okay, but out of this 1 million users, we have then daily active users. And these daily active users might be 100,000 or 50,000, or it can be 1 million. So you have 1 million users and 1 million daily active users. Daily active users means that these are the users who are using your application on a daily basis. Now, when we have the number of daily active users or total users, you can ask about the number of requests that each user does on a daily basis. You might hear that there is a number like 100 requests per day per user, or you can assume it. So if your interviewer will answer you, no, please assume it, then just take it into consideration. And my recommendation is that you always operate on numbers like 10, 100, 1000 and so on, because it's easier to calculate it during job interview. Now, when you have total requests per user per day and daily active users, you can calculate how many requests do you need to serve per second. Here you might as well mention that the request duration might be tricky because if it takes less than one second, then everything is fine. But what if each request takes more? Another number to think of is the storage. Because when you have movies or when you have songs, you need to store them somewhere. It would be great to ask how many songs do we plan to store there or how many movies. If there is an answer 100 million, then you can take this 100 million. If this is your assumption, then you can always reduce it a bit because it's easier, at least for me, to calculate on a lower numbers than on the higher ones, but you can as well assume 100 million songs. When you have the number of songs, you need as well to ask about the average size or tell about the assumption that you have. Like, okay, each song will be free for megabytes or each movie will be 100 megabytes or one gigabyte on average, or that there is a limitation of the video size. Another point on my list is to talk about the availability, because availability is a quality measurement that is usually a part of service level agreement. You might know it uh, in a shortcut of SLA. There, availability will be different between different systems. You might have a transaction system that is that should work always without interruptions, yes? So here you will be focusing on reaching the point of five nines instead of two nines. So you don't want your system to be unavailable for too long time during the year. But there are systems where it is not that critical to be running and here you might aim for lower availability. This is a great input while having job interview because it will show to your interviewer that you care also about the SLA. 
not only about technical things like number of requests, number of users, but as well the things related to service level agreement. That is the contract between you as a service provider and your customer. When you already understand your business domain, you narrowed the scope that you will focus on during system design interview and you discovered numbers, there is step number four that is focused on evaluating basic components. As you remember, in the beginning, I mentioned about different blocks that you can use. And here we will take this basic blocks and we will put it on our diagram. As we are building something similar to YouTube, you expect that we are going to have some web application and some mobile application. This is the part where you focus on front end. Then, of course, when you have mobile and web application, you require as well a backend solution. Inside backend, there might be these things like API, load balancer, API gateway, database storage, and so on. But here, focus first on just mentioning the API, a database, and a storage. So here we have just five components front end, mobile web app, then on the back end, API, database, and storage. That's it. When you are done with basic components, it's time to redesign your application. By redesigning, I mean you have some numbers, and based on these numbers, you can say that now you need to scale something. I always recommend to start with the key point of the system. If this is the API, then start with the API. You can now say that because of such amount of users, because of such amount of requests, you will need to scale the instances of API. But when you scale the instances of the API, now you need somehow to balance the traffic that is coming from the outside to each instance, that it's all balanced. You can do that by adding load balancer. <clears throat> when talking about load balancer, you might be asked about different concepts of load balancing of the traffic, so you need to know everything you can about load balancer. Then you might say that, yes, now we have this load balancing in front, but we might also want to have rate limiting, or we want to gather analytics, or we want to handle this API traffic management somehow. And now the perfect block for it would be the API gateway. And you will need to tell, explain about the API gateway. What is it? what uh, concepts does it have and so on. What can it help you with? You can mention here, for example, this rate limiting. And in rate limiting, you can talk about a uh, possible target for brute force attacks or DOS or the DOS, and that's why you need it up in front. Then you can focus on the right side of the API, things like database. And here you can say what you want to store in the database, like maybe emails of users or their names maybe some metadata of movies. And here you can talk about the title, director, actors, uh, length of the movie. Then you can talk here that you don't want to put the files as blobs in a database because it makes no sense. And now you need to explain why it makes no sense, why there is a better solution with the storage that you can add. Here you can talk as well about some possibilities that you have that you can do that in AWS with S3 or you can do that in Azure with Azure storage. This is something you can mention here. To optimize the storage, you might talk about uh, content delivery network. And again, you will need to tell why you want this content delivery network. Quite popular thing when talking about the system in system design interview is cache. And again, you can say that you want to optimize your database first with the read write replicas, but at some point, maybe this read replicas won't be enough and you would like to add cache now. And this is a perfect explanation why you want to add it. You can as well tell that uh, it might be the Redis cache or some other one. This is this place where you can talk as well about technologies. When talking about writes in the database, you can talk about sharding concept uh, that when you want to optimize the write part, you want to use sharding and way more things. This is up to you and up to interviewer where you would go, but you need to know everything about these blocks that I mentioned. After you are done with all these five steps, 
please make sure that you summarize it. Summarize the system. Talk about it with your interviewer. It might trigger very interesting discussion like where this system can go, how it can evolve and so on. And what would you do if this evolves in this or that way? This is a recommendation from my side because it gently closes the entire process of this interview. Today you learned about my method of five steps that helped me to pass every single system design interview that I participated in. Understanding the business domain, narrowing the scope, discovering the numbers, evaluating basic components and redesigning the system, all known as acronym UNDER. If you look for further education on system design interview, I can recommend you these books uh, there are two parts, system design interview, which is this green one, and system design interview, which is the blue one. It clearly describes all the components uh, that I mentioned today in different setups. So it will help you to learn about these components, to know what you need to know to pass the system design interview while focusing deeply on each of these components. Share your thoughts about system design interview process. What are your main problems with that? And how do you try to tackle it? It would be great if you can share these insights. Thanks a lot and hear you in the next episode.